Hey guys, and welcome to the channel. Paleo's newest update is now here, which means it's time once again to see what's new. The arrival of this update does mean that the Maji market is now over, sadly. No more hot pot. Yes, I know we're all crying internally maybe some of you externally, but hopefully we'll see it again in the future. Maybe at Zeki's Underground, perhaps. I've seen a lot of people asking for it, including myself, so we shall see what the team decides to do. On to the new things though, let's take a look at the patch notes released by the team. They start off by saying that it is bug hunting season, that they wanna dedicate this patch to squashing a lot of bugs, which of course is always great when devs pay attention to what players are asking for. They know in another part of the blog that there are over 250 bugs fixed, within this one patch alone. That's insane. Crazy to think that there were that many bugs, but even crazier that they managed to fit that many fixes in one patch. Mind you, it's only been a month since the last patch came out, so I'm pretty impressed. I read through them and they seem to pertain to all sorts of different types of bugs. Nintendo Switch bugs, Quest bugs, server connection bugs, visual bugs, you name it. But since we don't want this video to last all night long. You can find a more detailed list of these bug fixes in their blog post linked in the description below. Hopefully, if you've been experiencing any bugs, they could very well have been fixed in this patch. Definitely take a look and see if you're curious. The only issue I've really experienced, knock on wood, has been that my housing plot chimney smoke visual didn't look like it was supposed to, but thankfully that is said to have been fixed in this patch. They go on to say that they couldn't help themselves but to add on some more features and content on top of fixing all of those bugs, including three new decor sets, so if you're in the middle of decorating, you might wanna rethink everything all over again. First up, we have the Paltech set. So not only is Paleo coming to Steam in the near future, but they're also including some new Steam Punk items to this update. We now have 32 new items in this steampunk vibe. Three of the items, including the Paltech glove, microscope, and range hood can be found at the underground, but the rest of the items you'll need to craft yourself through inspiration at your crafting bench. And it's also mentioned that some of the items may become available for purchase, but please note that these are just the items and not the recipes. So if you find yourself running low on resources to make the items, but you do have some extra coin, keep an eye out for those to come into rotation. The steampunk wheels are already spinning for me. Which rooms can I put these in? Do I need a whole new room? But before any of us start making definite plans though, there's also the new flotsam decor set with 11 new items. This nautical theme set can be found in Bahari Bay and the new rummage piles that have been added in this patch. It's not exactly explained how this will work, but I would guess that the rummage piles act sort of the same as the makeshift chests with the makeshift items, but instead of having to fish them out, you'll find these rummageable piles along the beach. There's a cute little towel rack, hanging seashell mobile, a boat bookshelf, and the porthole frame wall decor, which is my personal favorite. These items will most likely be going into my aquarium room. So original, I know but they're gonna be perfect in there. There's also gonna be 13 new decor pieces found in item quests. And so far we only know about Hodari's grill, which we caught a sneak peek of in the gift from Paleo's Twitter page, but no other items have been revealed thus far that I know of anyway. However, the blog post does note that the items are exclusive to that area. And because of where they mentioned it in the post, we can assume that that area equals Bahari Bay. Something that's been asked for a lot, including by myself, some new clutter items. This time around, it looks like it's specifically kitchen items. The new gourmet set consists of 17 items you would likely see around your kitchen at home. Plates, cups, bowls, and silverware. You can buy the recipe for the plate, the cup, and the knife at Reth's Register at the Kilima Inn. And then you can obtain the rest of the gourmet set through crafting. I find it interesting that they put these recipes at Reth since they're not really food items. I thought that these would have been counted more as decor and been at Tish's, but it does still make sense since you do need these utensils to be able to eat with. And Tish's store is already getting some new things in this update. So now all of these items can be placed as clutter on your counters, tables, and I would assume any other shelf as well. I'm hoping this is a glimpse into future additions for clutter. I really want some more books for my bookshelves too. But for now, I'm happy to be getting any clutter at all. I like when my homes have a little bit more lived in vibe. Not too much clutter, but enough that it doesn't feel like super empty. The decorating doesn't stop there though. We now have the option to add pavilions onto our home plot too. You can buy the blueprint from City Hall. And man, do I have some ideas for these. You can make a cute little picnic area with benches, an outdoor party area, a dedicated space for crafting stations, a mini outdoor reading nook, pretty much anything you want a roof over without losing the vibe of being outdoors with. I've been using the makeshift pergola as a cute way to cover my crafting bench for now, but this 
this is definitely a nice upgrade and I will probably switch that out. I would guess that we're gonna be able to change the roof color on this too to match the house if we want. I hope so anyway. There's also 12 new wallpapers that can be purchased at Tisha's store. I was trying to pick a favorite so that I could have one to mention for the video, but I genuinely cannot choose you guys. I don't love them all, but I've narrowed it down to like my top five and that's as good as it's gonna get. Maybe once I see them inside, I'll change my mind. Maybe I'll like them more. Maybe I'll like them less, who knows? But I love the fact that we have options. Now for my favorite part of the update, we now have Bahari Bay access from home. I use the travel boards all the time to go between Kilima and Bahari. And it's not like it was a huge bother or anything, but obviously if we can have free travel because it is free, no coins needed. Not only do you get to save money, but you also get to save time. As now, instead of having to go to Kilima and then Bahari, you only have one loading screen instead of two. Definitely a win in my book. Time is precious and we need those coins for so many other things already, you guys. So thank you, Paleo devs. Not to ask for too much, but if we could also maybe get a fast travel option to the fairgrounds for future Maji market events. I would love that too, even if we still had to pay some coins. Some extra features that were also mentioned are that mining nodes will now behave more like forageable items. This means that instead of mining the rock and it disappearing completely, it will still remain available for others for a limited time and then disappear after that set amount of time. So if you've ever picked Dari cloves and saw that they disappeared a little while after being picked, the same will now happen to mining nodes. And the plus side of this is that you don't need to sit there and wait anymore after calling out a node like Paleum. You can mine the node and then anyone who is also around can mine the node, fully receiving the loot. And then after a set amount of time, the mine will despawn and then respawn again later. A mining node that is close to despawning will pulse more rapidly to signify that it is despawning soon. So there shouldn't be any guesswork to it. Although specific times between initial mining and despawn were not mentioned. This new feature does affect all mining nodes outside of your housing plot. Although we all know this is gonna help with Paleum the most guys as copper and iron are usually pretty easy to find. I'm looking forward to seeing how this works in game. Hopefully it helps prevent players from getting feisty with each other in the chat. And it's also mentioned that forgeable items will now have a despawn glow effect as well after being foraged on other players' screens too. Speaking of hard to obtain items, if you're out searching for Paleum or Flow and you have some Flow arrows with you, the timer on those has been extended from one minute to three minutes. I wonder if the three minute mark correlates at all with the despawn rate of the nodes. I would guess it wouldn't make any sense to have a flare for three minutes if the node disappears after only two minutes, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. Either way, using less flares to signal where things are means more resources in our pockets. And because the team has to support themselves in some way financially, there are five new outfit bundles available in the premium store. First up, we have the Astronomer. Each outfit in this bundle comes with a face mask, top and bottom. And when you equip the top in the Astronomer bundle, you're also gonna have this starry themed effect appear around you when you're idle. I love when they add these idle animations to the outfits because I just feel like it makes them pop a little bit more. Then we have the Cottage Witch, which comes with a hat, top and bottom. The Timely Tailor, with a top and a bottom. The Kill a cook in case you're wanting to match rest comes with a hat top and bottom and the shop them bundle with a face mask top and bottom so as you can see we have a lot of new items and features in this patch as usual because the paleo team is awesome and like i said if you want to check out the bug fixes you can do so using the link in the description below tons more info there guys but thank you so much for watching be sure to like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one bye